let's see, two, fourteen. Sweetheart, what's the combination to this lock? Our anniversary? Sweetheart? <laughs> When I was growing up, my father and I used to sit at the dinner table trying to challenge each other to figure out what the next number in a sequence was. Like 1, 2, 4, 8, 16. You get the idea, right? 32. You just keep incre increasing by powers of 2. Well, turns out we were annoying my younger sister to no end. So one day she came up with a sequence and asked us to guess the next one. It was, let's see, 13... 20, 23, 26, and we were to guess the next one. Well, I'll give you to the end to figure it out, but don't work too hard. It was a trick. So let's figure out a couple of sequences. The one that I showed before, those powers of 2, 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64. If you're in computing, you're going to know that sequence pretty well. But let's take a look at some other sequences. How about 1, 8, 27, 64, 125. What's the next one there? Well, one thing that you can see, hopefully, is that each one of these is actually the cube of a number. So this, we'll not worry about one just yet, but eight is the cube of two. And then you have three cubed, that's 27. Four cubed, that's 64. Five cubed, two, five times five is 25, times five is 125. So we've got one cubed, two cubed, three cubed, four cubed, five cubed. I'm guessing the next one is six cubed. 216. How about another one? Let's see. How about 0, 5, 9, 12, 14, 15, 15? That's an odd one. Well, this one was powers, right? Um, powers of and where the number being raised to the cube was the number that was increasing. So we had one, two, three, four, five cubed and so forth. Before that, the two was staying the same. It was the powers that were getting increased. Two to the zero, two to the one, two to the two, two to the three and so forth. This one is a little different because it's actually not doing multiplication, it's doing addition. So the difference between zero and five is Five. And so the difference between 5 and 9 is 4. The difference between 9 and 12 is 3. The difference between 12 and 14, 2. 14 to 15, 1. 15 to 15, 0. And I'm guessing that if this sequence continues on, we're actually going to start adding negative values. And so we've got plus 4, plus 3, excuse me, plus 5, plus 4, plus 3, plus 2, plus 1, plus 0, plus negative 1 would give us 14 as the next value. How about 1, 4, 2, 5, 3, 6? See what the next one is there. You know, once again, you know, this kind of, there's something interesting about this though. Actually, we've got 1, 2, 3 here, 4, 5, 6 here. So it looks like it's ascending, alternating back and forth between these two sequences, this 1, 2, 3, and 4, 5, 6. So I'm guessing that what happens is, is whenever, you, first you add 3, then you subtract two, then you add three, then you subtract two, then you add three, now subtract two to get four. All right, how about one more? How about one, two, six, 24, 120? Wow, what's this guy? Well, since it's increasing quickly, as it, more quickly as we add numbers to the sequence, I'm guessing multiplication may have something to do with it. So, uh, two, 1, 2, 6, 24. So, 2 is actually 2 times 1. 6 is 3 times 2. 24 is 4 times 6. And then four to 5 times 24 is 120. So, I'm guessing it's going to be 6 times 120. So, 120 times 6 is equal to 720.
So there are some sequences. And in fact, that's what we're going to be talking about today is sequences. Most sequences that we're looking at, in fact, any of these sequences that I've just gone over, most of these sequences are infinite in length. In other words, they can, they can go on forever and ever and ever. But it is possible that we have some finite sequences. For example, whenever we were talking about this combination lock, right? If you're familiar with one of these combination locks, these old school combination locks, you know that it's actually a sequence of three numbers. You turn right to the first number, left to the next number, and right to the next number. That sequence of numbers is going to open the lock for us. And so if we have a sequence like 12, 24, 36, that is a finite sequence. Three elements, always in order. If I swap two, we've got 24, 12, 36. While when we're talking about a set, that these two sets would be equal. If I had the curly braces around them, those two sets would be equal. But as far as what we're talking about today, which is sequences, it's not equal. These two are not equal. In fact, even if we had something like a, sm a slightly smaller sequence, if we had 12, 24, that sequence is not the same as this. This sequence is not going to open the lock. This sequence is not going to open the lock, only that one. But what if we're only off by a couple, right? What if we had 12, 24, 32? That sequence, once again, will not open it. So when we're talking about a sequence, we're talking about exactly the same numbers in exactly the same order, and if it's a finite, exactly the proper number of them. Now, when we are representing a sequence, typically what I am going to do is represent a sequence with some sort of a, 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 a parameter, a, a nomenclature to, sh to represent uh, a generic uh, sequence. So I've got, I'm going to use the letter A with a subscript, and we can go A1, A2, A3, and so forth up to a sub n and in fact if, if it's an infinite sequence we go past a sub n so we've got this one two three and then a generic a sub n and if there's if there's some sort of an expression for example our powers of two then we can actually show a sub n equal to an equation defined by m now let me talk about computing all good computer scientists start counting not from one, but from zero. And so you may see these sequences starting out with an n of one, or you may see the sequences starting out with an n of zero. It could go either way. For example, if we're talking about that powers of two sequence, it's nice to start out at zero because a sub zero is equal to two to the zero, which gives us one, which is really where you should start all those powers of two sequences. These sequences, whenever we're talking about a, um, a specific formula which will allow us to define the nth element like we did with that powers of 2, a sub n is equal to 2 to the n, that is called an explicit sequence. Now, an explicit sequence, once again, means I can develop a generic formula for the nth element that depends only on n. For example, what if I had the sequence 1, negative 1, 1, negative 1, 1, negative 1, and you guess what the next one is? Yeah, it's 1. Well, this is a sequence a lot like the powers of 2 sequence the, that we had talked about before. a sub n is equal to negative 1 to the nth. So whenever, a, whenever n is equal to 0, negative 1 to the 0 is 1. Negative 1 to the 1 is negative 1. Negative 1 squared is, two, is positive 1 and so forth. Um, let's talk about another one. How about 5, 10, 20, 40, 80, 160, and so forth? Wow. 
This one may be a little tougher to figure out. But one of the one way that we can start out determining this sequence is it looks like all of them are multiples of five. In other words, five times one is five, five times two is 10, five times four is 20, and so forth. Let's divide each one of these elements by five. If we do that, we get one, two, four, eight, 16, 32. Does that look familiar? Well, it kind of looks like that powers of two that I did at the beginning, right? So what I could say is we could develop the expression for this to be a sub n is equal to five times two to the nth with n equal to zero, one, two, and so forth, all right? So whenever we're looking at an n of three, so this is a sub zero, a sub one, two, three. So a sub three is two to the third, right? That's eight times five, that'll give us 40, which will give us the zero, one, two, three, third element there. Now, this sequence has a special name. It is referred to as a geometric progression. So a geometric progression has a special format for each of the, for, for the nth element, right? And so we've got a sub n is equal to, well, typically it's equal to some constant times some sort of another constant that is raised to the nth power. We looked at that whenever we did the previous example. I had a sub n is equal to five times two to the nth, right? So k, our constant is five in this case, and r is, is uh, two. Now, both k and r are going to be real numbers. Now, specifically, what we're looking at here is this R, and this is referred to as the common ratio. It is the ratio from one element to the next element. It is the, it is the ratio that is common as every time you increase the number of elements, all right? And by the way, something that I forgot to mention before is that sometimes whenever we're referring to this sequence, it looks like we're using set notation, but we're really not. Sometimes what you'll see is the curly braces around a sub n, and that is basically equal to a zero, a one, a two, and so forth. Once again, starting with zero in this case, sometimes you'll see us starting with one. Now we could also have a progression like this. How about negative five, negative two, one, four, seven, and so forth, all right? Now, one of the things I could do, and this is gonna seem a little strange, and this has nothing to do with the sequence, I'm just showing you one way to view what this would look like if we were trying to gener generate the generic uh, expression for a sub n. Let's just say that I have a graph, and I've got, let's see, at the, at the zeroth position, I've got x is equal to negative five. At the one position, I've got x is equal to two. At the two, I've got x is equal to one. At the three, I've got x is equal to four. At the, f at the, at the three position, at the fourth position, I've got x is equal to seven. And what I can do is just draw a line connecting these, and maybe my drawing is not perfect, but it's linear. It is adding a consistent amount from element to element. So I've got, uh, it looks like I'm adding three each time I'm going to go to the next element. So negative five plus three is negative two, plus three is one, plus three is four, plus three is seven, all right? Well, you all are familiar with a linear function in mathematics, I'm, I'm assuming you are. You've probably seen something like y is equal to a plus bx, right? And that's what that's the expression across real numbers that will give you that linear that linear uh, result. Now, when we talk about discrete math or when we're talking about sequences, we're talking about discrete 
values, discrete positions. And so we're going to have a slightly different way of representing this. And so we're looking at this sequence, a sub n, and our initial value, the a sub 0 element, is going to be some constant k. And then for the next element, what you're going to do is you're going to add an offset. I'm calling it d here. And then for the next element, you're going to add 2d. And then for the next element, you're going to add 3d. And keep going up until you get to the nth element, which is going to be k times excuse me, k plus n times d. And so the nth element is going to be equal to some constant, some initial value, plus n times d. Now, in this case, we've got d is going to be called our common difference. And just like the geometric sequence, k and d are real numbers. Now, this progression is referred to as, we had the geometric progression, this is called the arithmetic progression. So there you go, a quick introduction to sequences. Now specifically, this is the explicit sequences. We'll talk about another type of sequence in the next lesson. By the way, what about this sequence up top here? This 13, 20, 23, 26. You know, she got us. Neither my dad nor I could figure it out. We were looking at it mathematically. It turns out that what she had done was taken the first letter of the, each day of the week and then mapped it to the number that represents in the sequence in the alphabet what position that is. Which means that after six, you get the position in the alphabet where S is, which is 19, followed by another 19. So what we had here was a finite sequence. Now it turns out that this finite sequence is another type of sequence that is represented in computing, specifically a string. We've got M, T, W, T, F, S, S. So it is a finite length, and in fact, what we have whenever we're talking about computing is something called the length. What is the length? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, right? So the length is equal to seven, and this is a string, another type of sequence that you will see in computing. If you're anything like me, you may look at this and say, well, that's silly. All I know is it stumped my dad and me, and it made my sister incredibly happy.